So adrenal fatigue and caffeine, that's probably one of the most common questions I get with the people that are exhausted, they're burnt out, they're crashing in the middle of the day, they don't handle their stress well, they have a broken rhythm so they don't have energy in the morning, they may have energy in the afternoon or evening or they crash in the middle of the day, brain fog, just not handling stress very well. And they've heard of this thing called adrenal fatigue and whether they believe it's real or not, they ask me, hey, should I be using caffeine? So that's what I wanna answer for you today. So first and foremost is let's discuss the term adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue is a very, very common, common question that people don't believe is actually real, especially the medical establishment, traditional doctors, medical schools, and even the peer-reviewed research articles that come out that say there's not really an adrenal fatigue phenomenon per se, meaning that if you have exhaustion and burnout and you go to the doctor and they do an ACTH stimulation test and they find out whether or not when they send signals from the brain to the adrenals, are the adrenals making the stress hormone, mainly cortisol, at an adequate level? If they aren't, then that's called adrenal insufficiency. If they are, then those are normal adrenals. There's no such thing as adrenal fatigue in the allopathic traditional approach. So with that being said, adrenal insufficiency is a very, very uncommon thing. Not to say you can't have it, but it's an autoimmune disease. It's called Addison's and it's when your immune system attacks your adrenal glands and actually causes it to break down so that it's not producing enough cortisol to get through the day. Cortisol being your stress hormone, which has many, many functions, but one of the main functions is to be anti-inflammatory, to help get energy into the bloodstream by breaking down stored carbohydrates and making sure that you increase your glucose levels, also producing the adrenal, adrenaline hormones so that you can rise up to the occasion and the fight or flight and also helping to balance your minerals. That's mainly what the adrenals do, as well as sex hormones as well. So a lot of people that have exhaustion and fatigue, whether or not you wanna call it adrenal fatigue, they have libido issues, they have drive issues, they don't have a lot of vigor, and they don't feel like they're re repairing their body, so when they exercise, they feel that they don't bounce back, or they don't have the stamina, or they don't have the strength, because again, when you're under a stress response that continues over and over and over again, whether or not the adrenals are producing an adequate amount of hormones to call it adrenal fatigue, you can still have these problems. I have plenty of videos on this channel. Make sure you subscribe, you turn on your alarm, give me a comment or a like so that you can go back and hear what I have to say about all those other things. But the topic of this conversation is caffeine. Can I drink coffee if I have adrenal fatigue? Or sometimes you don't even ask, it's just you rely on it. You get up in the morning, you need that cup of joe, it gives you that little stimulus, it gives you that little bolt, and then maybe you're having a lot of coffee throughout the day, and now it's not working the same way that it used to. Or some people will tell me, I'm very sensitive to coffee, I can't even tolerate it, it's too jittery. Or some people feel like they can have it throughout the entire day, and it doesn't cause them any challenges. And there's a lot of genetic components to it. We do a genetic test and there is specific genes, the CYP enzymes that help metabolize caffeine quicker. So those people may not be as stimulated from caffeine because they're very quick metabolizers of caffeine. And so that is a real phenomenon. But it comes back to, should I be drinking caffeine? And I would say it depends. It depends. Uh, I really do believe in moderation, and I believe if you're looking upstream to figure out why the stress response system is breaking down, why you're exhausted, could be a lifestyle thing, you're too, uh, you're never getting enough sleep, you're not adhering to a, a daily regimen of getting up and, and going to bed at normal hours, or potentially you're eating a crappy diet, you're not getting many nutrients in your foods, you are not active, you're in very difficult relationships, and things are overwhelming you, and you're relying on the caffeine to help you get through the day. 
in moderation, again, if you're addressing those things and you can really look in the mirror and it's not always a big surprise to what is the elephant in the room? What is stressing you out? Is it a relationship? Is it a job? Have you had a past exposure to a chemical or a post-traumatic stressor or a physical injury or, you know, toxins? Those are the things that ultimately need to be addressed so that the moderation of caffeine can be tolerated. But if you're going excessively on the caffeine, then what's happening ultimately is that's a stimulant. It's called a catecholamine. And those are the same catecholamine pathways that produce your adrenaline and your noradrenaline and your fight or flight system. So if you're constantly in fight or flight, you have a stressor and, and your body responds in a way that's inappropriate, meaning I shouldn't really have gotten that stressed out. I mean, it was, yeah, Mary told me about my son getting in trouble in school, but to almost have a panic attack and to feel faint and lightheaded and not be able to get my heart rate down. Someone told me the other day, it feels like they're on a roller coaster ride and they can't get off. And it's just that sort of that stimulating feeling. For those people, caffeine is not going to be a good idea because that's putting another oil to the fluid of fire and it's causing it to ignite even further. But I typically say, again, in moderation. Now, what is moderation? That really depends. It's different from different people. Some people can say, oh, I only have, you know, one serving of coffee per day, but it's in a big gulp size. And that's, that's too much as well. Typically, I see some other challenges with caffeine as well. So if you're using artificial sweeteners, sweet and lows, or uh, other things that are aspartame, those are things that are going to be giving you um, glutamate exposures. And that glutamate exposure is going to create more excitability than the caffeine alone. And I would say, don't use that. A black cup of coffee is perfectly okay if you're doing it in moderation again. Now, some people will say, well, I only put a little cream in it. Is that cream organic cream? I know the organic thing, should I be doing organic or not organic? But if you look deep into the studies of non-organic dairy, it's really gross. I mean, it's pus, it's fluid, it's hormones. Is there hormones in there? Um, it, it can be very, very debilitating, not to mention you could have problems with break, breaking down lactose because you don't have the ability to break down that sugar or you may be re responding to the protein because the protein, the peptide, is very inflammation driving and that can create more excitability in your body. If you're using artificial sweeteners again or you're using a different non-dairy creamer that has like maple walnut or some kind of cinnamon spice with peppermint dolce, you know that's going to be artificial and that's going to be stimulating you quite quite severely and that's not effective either. So you want it to be as unadulterated as possible. I would also say that the bean, now I'm sorry that you're watching this video and you're getting more information than you probably anticipated because you're like, hey, I just want to know, is it good or not good? And I'm telling you in moderation, it could be good. If you're in that fight or flight mechanism and you can't get off the roller coaster, whether it's unadulterated caffeine or not, you shouldn't be doing it because you need to help to repair your stress response system. And then you need to look at how adulterated is it? Is there artificial sweeteners? Is there a non-organic, pus-filled, yucky, or uh, antibiotic-laden um, creamer? Um, or is the coffee bean? Now, the coffee bean, a lot of the times, unfortunately, the coffee bean can be quite moldy, and that mold can create major mycotoxin exposure in your body, thereby creating more damage to your stress response system. And now that coffee is not helpful. That's a, that's a third thing. So we have to really think about making sure, A, we're getting it in moderation. B, we are making sure it's unadulterated. And that means the, now some people will say, what about sugar? Listen, if you're putting some natural sweeteners in it and that's not spiking your glucose levels and it's not causing it to go up and down very, very uh, dramatically, and that's a whole other lesson that I have on my video, video channel, um, it could be okay again in moderation minimal amounts and then the other thing I would mostly say is making sure you're getting to the root cause of your stress response system meaning you have a new car and every time you go out to start the the engine it doesn't start and it's new 
and there's nothing wrong mechanically but what is wrong is that every time you go inside the house you leave the headlights on you leave the interior light on maybe you leave the motor running um, you leave the glove compartment open and those little drainers of the battery are going to be the things that the reason why you're taking the coffee in the first place so I would really urge you to look upstream to figure out what those are and many times it's not going to be found at the end of a supplement bottle. It's more effective to remove the stressor. I tell people, think about it as if I was a business consultant and I was assessing your business and we wanted to have better profit loss statements. What would be the first thing that we could effectively do that would give us more disposable income or a better profit? And that would be cutting the expenses. That'd be looking like, hey, why do you have this reoccurring expense here? What's this? What's that? What's those? And you may have forgotten, yeah, I put myself on auto pay and I don't even remember what that is. I don't even use it. I stopped using it, but you didn't cancel the expense from your, your, your balance sheet. And that keeps draining your income. That's the same thing with your body. Perhaps there is a relationship, there's a family member, there's a spouse, there's a child, there's a boss, there's a to-do list, there's extracurricular activities and community services that you may look inside the mirror and say, do I really need to be putting up with this because that's causing me to drink copious amounts of coffee that's causing my stress response to be completely wound up creating more stimulation and adrenaline and and stimulation to my adrenal glands and whether it's a real phenomenon or not i'm exhausted i'm tired i can't focus i can't concentrate i crash in the middle of the day and i'm doing this vicious cycle that's draining the battery even further while i don't even look at the mirror and figure out why what's the main cause so hopefully that gives you a lot of help as to if coffee is good or if it isn't good, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I help and I teach exhausted adults the truth about adrenal fatigue so they can get their energy back quickly. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you check out the links below so that you can have additional resources to get your energy back fast. Take care.